Hi, welcome to the latest edition of Out and About in Cabarrus County. I'm Steve Morris, Cabarrus County Commissioner, and we're coming to you today with a really exciting sneak preview of the work that you've all heard a lot about that's going on in the clock tower in our historic Cabarrus County Courthouse. Uh, this is at the very top of the structure. It's an area that's not accessible to the public. I've been wanting to come up here for years and they made me sign all kind of waivers uh, my entire life away in case I fall off but it's really a really neat place and I'm really happy to have Scott Smizer with me today. Scott is from the Cabarrus Timekeepers Organization. That is the group that is spearheading uh, the restoration and renovation of the historic uh, clock in the top of our courthouse. So it won't be so very long that we'll be able to look up at the top of the courthouse and see the correct time through these windows that you may see uh, around this space and also hear the chimes ring on the hour and half hour. Right. Uh, Scott, you know, I'm really happy to have you with me today. Good Tell to us here. a little bit about the process and your organization and, and, and how we got to where we are now in this sure. project. Um, well, uh, Cabarrus Time Savers actually started um, with the project itself first. We needed the project and then we needed a way to really secure it, raise money for it, and get publicity for it. So um, we started a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, and uh, I have a great crew of people behind me that have really helped me you know, make this happen. But uh, really, uh, the county allowing us to come up here and just look it over and research it and, and learn about it and see what we were up against. and. Um, learn about the original installation and see how we could help um, was the most important part and what really kickstarted the project. Yeah, what what, do you, what was the actual date that, that we've determined when this the clockworks were installed? Um, the actual installation date is unknown, but the purchase date was in April of 1876. 1876. The Seth Thomas Corporation. Right. Well, I'm sure that um, it's not visible to, to, to the audience watching today, but there's already been a lot of work done up here. Uh, the county itself has had to do some structural work and make some repairs and yes. some address some safety issues as far as railings and the stairs to access this to even, uh, some of that occurred before you could even remove the old equipment, right? Um, yeah, uh, a little bit of it did. And in fact, um, in some cases we had to take a lot of it down um, with the original stairs, um, just as they would have brought it up, um, mm -hmm. and had to come down in pieces, um, and it was extremely heavy, even in pieces, and right. awkward, and and uh, so carrying some of the pieces down that would have weighed more than 200 pounds just for the individual pieces themselves um, was was quite an undertaking. Lots of ropes and pulleys, and uh, just some brute strength to get it down, and right. definitely some sweat, and it was warm up here, so uh, we had to get it down before we could really fully assess the damage. Mm -hmm. um, and in doing so, we also um, got all of the hands and things off of um, the dials that you see here in, mm -hmm. in the, in the uh, dial room here. So, yeah. what, what would you say the total weight of this entire assembly would be when it's all put together? Uh, well, the entire assembly will be composed of three major components. You'll have um, what's called uh, the the actual winder assemblies, um, which will actually live below us, and there'll be two of those, one for the timing side of the mm -hmm. clock and one for the strike side. Um, and then what we have, um, uh, the actual clock mechanism itself, um, which is um, called the movement. Um, mm -hmm. The clock movement weighs um, somewhere between uh, maybe 550 and maybe 750. We didn't get a, a good weight on it mm -hmm. yet, but um, significantly heavy. But um, th uh, a lot of the associated parts with it, like the pendulum bob itself, um, w was no longer attached to it. And just that part alone weighed 110 pounds. That's mm -hmm. you know, kind of a two liter bottle looking um, piece of cast iron um, right. that would be suspended from um, an eight foot long um, pendulum rod, which was made of wood. Mm -hmm. So, but um, we determined that a lot of the pieces were missing from this clock. So 
um, we're going to have to remake a lot of that. And so that was a few pieces we didn't have to right. take down at least. Yeah. And so, so the, you know, you talked about repairing the damage to the clock and, and those kind of things. Did most of that damage occur just from age? Uh, some of it perhaps w wasn't the clock converted to a motorized unit Correct. at some point? Is that where, where these changes occurred? So um, it, it's pretty common for tower clocks to, you know, they have a very long lifespan and mm -hmm. um, they have many operators or, you know, maintenance people that will take care of and or set the clock. And over time, um, you know, that, that task gets carried down from person to person. You know, maybe one person doesn't want to come up here anymore or can't come up here anymore physically. Right. Um, so they'll pass it on to the next guy and maybe some information is lost about how to care for the clock. So then, you know, you know years and decades of passing that task on to various mm -hmm. people, the, the correct process is often lost. And so you'll have um, over oiling or, you know, under cleaning, um, mm -hmm. over maintaining the clock really. Um, so that can lead to a lot of wear on the clock because over oiling you collects dust and then right. you know it just really grinds up and and the, the brass um, what they call wheels they're, they're mm -hmm. gears but in, in horology terms are, they're considered wheels right. um, by definition but um, so in the 1940s approximately 1945 or 1946 the clock was actually converted to electric um, and how they did that was they removed the components that made it go tick tock. Um, what's called the escapement, um, the escapement assembly, which is right. your pendulum and what uh, a little pinwheel um, that is driven by the the actual pendulum moving back and forth, which allows the weight to drop and keep time. Mm -hmm. um, they replaced those with a motor, um, which was is fairly common um, in the late 30s, early 40s. You know, you know, it's maybe a good advertising scheme. I don't know, um, but you know. At the end of the day, somebody doesn't have to come up here once a week. This isn't what's considered an eight-day clock, so it has to be wound once a week. And what they do is they, they remove all those components, attach the electric motor, and then only you know somebody only has to come up here, you right. know, whenever whenever things aren't working right. Um, mm -hmm. However, you know, a lot of the damage occurred um, from the installation because um, that those particular types of motors, if we have a power outage or something like that, oftentimes they can run backwards. And the clock was only designed to run one direction, right. so um, some damage um, occurred from that. Some pieces mm -hmm. were bent. Um, thankfully, no real extensive damage. Um, the majority of the damage really comes from when they installed that, just removing the parts and then the parts getting misplaced, right. stolen. You know, maybe they're in somebody's garage somewhere. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to get information about missing pieces. So if anybody out there watching knows anything about the parts, we would love to know because those would be parts that we would want to put back in here that we wouldn't have to remake. And so we continue to search for that um, in the background as we prepare to make the new pieces. Yeah. So from the 1800s up until 1940, somebody climbed up this pretty significant That's right. steps of stairs and wound this clock every week. They did. And they were uh, basically two big crates of mm -hmm. you know various forms of weight so everything from rocks to maybe scrap metal or whatever would, would have been in these boxes mm -hmm. and um, if you look at the front of the courthouse you know those who are watching you know they they've seen the front of the courthouse and um, if you've been inside the courthouse there's a small door on either side of the entryway and those were the bottom of the weight chutes okay. so those weights would fall you know however many stories five stories I believe um, mm -hmm. is probably the number and uh, then they would load those crates up in the bottom if they needed to, but that's how they would have been originally installed. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, they, when they electrified it, they removed all those. And mm -hmm. there's some of the remnants laying in the building, but for the most part, most of that stuff has been removed. And the weight chutes that the weights rode up and down in um, actually were repurposed for sprinkler risers and communications and electrical cables and things like that. Okay, I've seen those doors before and never knew what the origin of them were. <laughs> so how's it going to work once you complete this work? Right, so um, essentially um, this will still be a weight driven clock at this point. We, there will be no electrical, like direct electric motor running the clock. Mm -hmm. Um, which would be a, like a synchronous motor or something like that. So uh, we will put back all of the original designed components. Um, you know, obviously we would like to have the originals, but we'll have to we'll have to actually remake them, 
reverse engineer them and have them machined, cast mm -hmm. and machined for that matter, and we'll use the original process as they would have um, in the original construction of the clock right. so that it's authentic. Um, but since we cannot put back those weights in the weight chutes because they've been repurposed, mm -hmm. we'll use a slightly more modern system that would still be correct um, for an early 1900s um, installation where essentially you have um, two uh, weight-driven systems that sit below on the platform that was installed, mm -hmm. and uh, those are run by an electric motor, uh, what's called an endless rope system, but it's actually okay. a chain, um, mm -hmm. but the term would have been endless rope. And so um, every 16 hours or so, um, those weights will get wound back up. Okay. Um, but those, those weight drive systems will run the clock mechanically okay. um, through a chain and sprocket system. Yeah, well, th this is really interesting and really exciting. Yeah, this is this costing quite a bit of money to, to do all this work. And of course, the, the Cabarrus County itself has already uh, invested a pretty significant yeah. amount of money in making these improvements to yeah. this tower Which with it, the stairs and the rails. It really needed it. Um, this was probably the only part of the courthouse that hadn't really been restored. And, um, it, you know, it wasn't, you know, in any danger of falling or anything like that. But um, for safety and, you know, just, you know, to make it to code and, you know, for people to come up and down here safely to work, it really yeah. was a good this, thing that it was done. This is really a treasured part of Cabarrus County's history. And it's a I beautiful mean, it's, building at that. It, it definitely is. It's one of the most photographed spots anywhere in the county. Um, you, you see them all around. So how much, uh, how much is this total project uh, going, going to cost? Uh, the total project um, right now we're currently estimating at approximately $47,000. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that will go into the actual dials being replaced um, with more original looking dials. Mm -hmm. The original dials in the building were actually wood, um, well, at a wood face with mm -hmm. um, wood hands. Um, and throughout, throughout the years, some of that stuff has been replaced, including what you see now, which are glass dials, which was mm -hmm. what people have been looking at for many decades up here. Right. Um, and uh, I can't find an actual date and when these would have been mm -hmm. replaced with the glass. Um, um, however, they have seen several iterations. They've been repainted several times. Right. And uh, now they're really in their worst state. So it'll be a great improvement to the building. Mm -hmm. um, but we're taking an original design from the Seth Thomas company that would look error correct. Um, we actually replicated some Seth Thomas numerals um, so that they are correct right. for the installation and visually look correct. So um, part of this process uh, is run by, by Phil Wright. We've uh, essentially employed Phil Wright of the Tower Clock Company mm -hmm. um, in Ohio to redo these, these beautiful dials with these original Seth Thomas style components. Um, they are currently being completed as we mm -hmm. speak, and we will install those on, on May the 2nd. Hopefully that, that's the plan unless something changes. However, we raised a lot of the money to go towards that, mm -hmm. as well as the winding systems that will replace the original winding arrangement um, from the original design of the clock. Um, and then the rest of the money really goes towards the physical part recreation um, and the, the labor that we'll pay to have mm -hmm. things made and machined, um, as well as you know paint and, and all those kinds of things. Really, Cabarrus Time Savers is really just um, kind of orchestrating to make sure that it gets restored correctly. Mm -hmm. But we're also doing a lot of the physical work ourselves, a lot right. of the restoration work, the research on the entire project, including the back history and, and everything that comes along with this installation to make sure that it's absolutely as authentic as we can get it. Yeah, well, two questions. Number one, how much money do you still have to raise to complete the project? And number two, how can folks that, that are interested in seeing this completed successfully uh, make contributions? Um, we have a, well, I'll tell you about the place first. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a, a blog page that we have set up uh, um, that people can go and visit and they can see the progress on everything. And it has uh, most of our updated numbers on there so people can see. And um, all mm -hmm. of our contact information on, is on there as well, including our, our email and uh, mailing address. And we hope to update that with some type of web link where people can go and they can you know, donate directly. Uh, as of right now, we have um, a significant amount uh, promised to us. Um, residents of Historic Concord have graciously um, promised a significant amount of money to us, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's just been fantastic. We couldn't have started the project without them, um, and as well as 
um, Daughters of the Confederate and um, a few other private donors and, and things like that. At the end of the day, we're, we're left still having to raise um, approximately $17,000 or mm -hmm. so. Um, I believe was the number. Um, so, and, and we try to keep the website updated so folks know that number. But, um, but you know, raising money for something like this when people don't really know a lot about it, don't understand it, is right. it, it can be challenging um, yeah. for sure. And and all of us are kind of doing this on our own time as well. Right. So right. we all have day jobs. So <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully, what we're doing today will help in that effort. Absolutely. To, to raise some yeah. of those funds. And I'm glad you mentioned the Daughters of the Confederacy. They did a beautiful job they did. restoring the historic fountain. They did, and it turned out wonderful. And yes. Lois Marlowe, who was involved with that mm -hmm. project, um, has uh, been very helpful with all of this. And she was actually, she was the one that really helped kickstart this. So it's, well, it's been great. She was, yeah. she was able to get me in touch with the right people to, to get this done. Because when I moved to town here about seven years ago, mm -hmm. I said, that clock has to get done. And then I started asking around. And it was right. hard to find anybody that really knew anything about the clock or um, who to even contact that would know anything about the clock. Right. And then eventually um, I met Lois and she helped quite a bit, you know, get in touch with the right yeah. folks. And Excellent. Well, she really knows great. how to get things done. Yes, she does. And that's, yes. that's the first time that I really got on my radar was at the dedication of the fountain. And, and Lois came up to me and pointed up and said, you know, wh what, what will we have to do to get that clock? That's right. To get that clock working. So that, that's been several years ago and we've yeah. come a long way now. Certainly appreciate your efforts and the other volunteers that are participating in this project. And, and, and this has been a great experience for me. And hopefully uh, folks in Cabarrus County will see, yeah. see this and go visit your website. Absolutely. And, and if you haven't seen it, come by. See the building. It's beautiful. Right. Um, and, you know, watch for updates. Here, right, you know, right. Soon. And we, we, we still have to point out, though, that even though you come by to look at it, you can't come up here. That's right. That's <laughs> they right. Cautioned, they cautioned me to make, uh, make sure that people right. understood that. And so what we um, actually, along those lines, yeah. what we're hoping to do is actually put a real-time web feed up here um, mm -hmm. for those that oh. are interested in seeing the mm -hmm. clock. Um, it does do some things. It doesn't just go tick tock. You know, right. uh, there's a striking sequence that has a bunch of moving parts, so it's kind of interesting. But more than anything, the community needs to see where their their money has gone and yes. and appreciate such a rare piece of equipment. Um, it, and they really are rare. This is uh, mm -hmm. one of approximately 15 that were ever made in the world of this particular model. Mm -hmm. And on record, it's one of four that we can even find that may still exist. Yeah. So it's extremely rare and it's a beautiful clock. Well, so. that's great. You know, we, ha we have a lot of unique things about Cabarrus County that we're proud of and we're happy to have this on the list. Thank you so much for spending time with me today and hiking up all those stairs. Ah, I uh, love it. Yeah, and the view is spectacular from up it here. It is. Uh, so that, that ends another session of Out and About in Cabarrus County. We thank you for being with us today. If you have suggestions for topics or locations that you would like to see on Out and About, please contact us. Our email address is outandabout at cabarruscounty.us.